everyone, and welcome to the 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. session of the 2020 Open Simulator Community Conference. My name is Bella Luna, and I'm your moderator. In this session, we are happy to introduce a session called Cross College, Cross Pollen, When Professionals and Virtual Worlds Collide. Our speakers are Andrew Sullivan, Andy Sullivan, Avatar, James Neville, Sight Arm Madonna, Avatar, Renee Brock, Zinnia Zilber, Avatar. Now, Andrew is a 3D modeler and scripter, process simulation designer, and university instructor with 28 years experience in the refining and chemical sector with roles including FCC business team lead, operations coordinator, and engineering supervisor. James Neville, site arm, is owner of online media services of Development One LLC, online presence, consultant, and practitioner in applied online collaboration, virtual reality, and social media. Renee Brock, Sinia Zauber, is an artist, a professor, a superhero, an advocate for awesomeness, encouraging and empowering active, inclusive education and community participation in the arts and sciences. Now, please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have any questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC20. Welcome, everyone, and let's begin the session. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cross College, Cross Pollen, when professional and virtual worlds collide. Collaborative presentation sponsored by the Open Simulator Community Conference 2020. A few housekeeping items first. This presentation will be in text as well as voice. We realize these information displays on the stage are dense for those familiar with using alt click or option click to zoom in on them, please do so at your convenience. These displays are also available at our booth to examine more closely and to get more information at your leisure. In today's presentation, you will learn about using virtual presence in process simulation, multimedia communication, online collaboration, and role play training in order to improve reliability and safety in a dangerous operating environment. You will be invited to see how to use these techniques for yourself. For example, to work with others in professional disciplines distinct from your own, yet complementary. We are working with students going directly into the workforce after graduation, and also students returning to the workforce after professional retraining. As such, it is critically important for them to not only learn the subject matter of their discipline, but also the skill to communicate their knowledge effectively in collaborative efforts with practitioners in other professional disciplines. This includes the contents of their areas of expertise and the styles of working and communicating that they are likely to encounter in the real world. Our team members today are Andrew Sullivan, Avatar Andy, Instructor in Process Operations. Andy will cover problem statement. Renee Brock, Avatar name Zinnia, Instructor in Multimedia Communication. Zinnia will cover problem solution and presentation of results. James Neville, avatar named Sidearm, facilitator in online collaboration, and Becky Adams, avatar named Ellie, facilitator in learning technology. Our booth and further information are located in Expo 3, booth 21. Please hold your questions till the end or type them in chat for follow up. Over to you, Andy. Hello, everyone. I am Andy Sullivan. I teach a two year process plant technology program at Montana State University Billings. I have 21 years of experience in the oil industry and seven years of teaching experience. 
Process plant technicians are operators that run hazardous processes in refineries and chemical plants. VR enables authentic training on complex equipment and intricate procedures like starting up a large furnace. Training on refinery equipment and procedures is challenged because the equipment can run for years before operators will execute complex and potentially hazardous procedures such as a startup procedure. How do you train on something you can't practice? To address this training challenge, we built a virtual refinery furnace. A furnace was chosen for our first process unit because they are common, potentially hazardous, and have a history of incidents in industry. More information on how we use the furnace simulation is available in the video link posted to chat. We are currently working on a sour water stripper and wastewater treating facility. Procedures and field documentation at the virtual furnace are reflective of industry best practices. But even with authentic job aids and training, operating a furnace perfectly is a challenge for new operators. Operating a furnace is even challenging for experienced operators in a refinery setting. Serious incidents persist in industry despite significant investments in time and money to develop and refine training procedures and field documentation. The incidents happen at even the most safety focused and resourceful companies. Are there ways we can improve our procedures, field documentation and other job aids to better support operators for success? In a hazardous industry like oil refining, our goal must be to start it upright the first time, every time. Implementation of our project with Peninsula College included several instructor greeting, brainstorming, and alignment meetings. Motivated students self-selected for this optional activity were briefed on the project plan and then met in world three times. First to discuss the problem statement, second for problem solving, and third for presentation of learnings. Students and instructors debriefed to capture learnings. And then I'll hand it off to Zinnia. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, James and Andy, and thank you all for this opportunity to share our experience with you all. Andy is correct about this engagement between our students that these operators and these designers get to produce authentic actions and reactions. And that virtual learning environments make the impossible quite possible. I started as a college professor nearly 24 years ago and have been teaching online and in world for over 12 years. Peninsula College has provided degrees in multimedia communications online for even longer and is available to a global audience. We have diverse population of students age 15 to 92 in our courses. While achieving full accessibility isn't easy, we do our best to accommodate learning environments to be inclusive and respectful. Communication, inquiry, and trust are important components in both Andy and my classrooms, although we don't work with flames as much as his students. This project was a huge lesson in communication and patience. Since April this year, all my courses have been held in Zoom and Second Life in voice and chat to meet the needs of all of my students. I would like to share with you two systems with you that my students used for this project with Andy's students. We both recognized our students would benefit from practicing interpersonal emotional intelligence to communicate and interact with others effectively. These perceptive, adaptive, cooperative, and collaborative behaviors often referred to as soft skills balance self-awareness, being empathetic, and questioning authority in conversations and outcomes. 
you have to have clear communication success when you have these essential items. You can see the graph on my, Im on my image in the poster. The elements link together. When one is missing, the opportunity for success is lost. Without agency, resistance takes a stand. Without vision, your experience becomes confusion. Without incentives, you gain resentment. Without skills, anxiety forms and grows. Without resources, frustration fills the void. And without a strategy, debilitation halts all action. I teach my students to ask lots of questions while creating a safe and inspiring space for collaboration. This requires active listening, sincere curiosity, gift giving, and perseverance. My students produce media projects, which include videos, graphic design, websites, and marketing campaigns for local businesses, military and government agencies, and educational and nonprofit organizations. I trust my students and encourage agency in their learning and producing. In my courses, we use my decisive media production system to explore and foster inquiry as we develop solutions and create content. Discover, defining the reasoning of the project, the end goal and the call to action. Document, ask questions, do research, and curate, and gather content. Design, create, and explore, and express the actions, the community goals. Develop, make the work, and devise different versions. Deploy, execute requirements in action and design. Look twice before you leap. Update. Gain positive and productive feedback. Give yourself time for reflection and refine the work. This creative system supports iterations and improvement. For this project, the designers were given the assignment directions and explanation as to how our three, world, our three in world experiences together would go, much like the stages of a story introduction, conflict, and resolution. Our first meeting would be Andy's students presenting the problem. Our second meeting would be the, my students presenting their process to devise a solution. And the third meeting and final meeting would be presenting the solution and all the students reflecting on the process. We had our introduction meeting to get to know each other while learning about the conflict or problem of how to effectively communicate strategies for the virtual furnace at the heavy industry sim. The engineers shared the operation manual that would be the designer's challenge and tour of their environment. The plainness of the manuals were truly inspiring. Between meetings, designers brainstormed ideas amongst themselves and prepared for the next meeting. For the second meeting, the designers developed and built whole, a whole immersive experience for the engineers to visit their virtual galleries and studio spaces to inspire creativity and collaboration. Like Andy, I utilize virtual environments to develop professional training scenarios for my students. The designers had generated ideas for creative visual solutions to improve operator performance and had more questions for the engineers before producing them. They were surprised by the pushback of their preparedness and ideas. This confusion and disappointment generated an unexpected reward. Hours of profound discussions about professionalism and persistence during my class sessions that built a strong stronger trust and support amongst the classmates. Determined to demonstrate their creative solutions, the designers went to work, designing and curating a presentation stage to display their design achievements. They really wanted to encourage the, the engineers to see the light of universal and attractive design, and of course, color. We brought cookies and caramel to apples to sweeten the show. We ended the project with our students sharing their constructive and positive reflections on the experience. My students praised Andy's instructional work and his students. Then they presented their three examples of operational manual solutions and gave gifts, of course. 
After this reflection pr presentation, Andy and his students expressed genuine interest in my students' solutions. That was so wonderful. This experience became an excellent exercise in improving communication, not just for the final result, but through the whole process. My students often say that working in virtual worlds creates a level playing field free for equality and equity. They encourage more educators to utilize virtual worlds. I'm very proud of all the students who participated and grateful to learn something new from Andy, James, and Becky. You can discover more about my research, art, and work at uniqueisyou.com. Thank you very much. Back to you, James. All righty. This is a wrap. I would like to acknowledge our expert team members. Andrew Sullivan, AK Andy, who has just been awarded a 2020 Montana University System Seed Grant to learn to operate a water treatment facility in virtual reality. Renee Brock, AKA Zinnia, who was awarded the 2020 Thinker Award for virtual best practices in education. Becky Adams, AK Ellie, who as our process observer presided, provided perspicacity, insight, and timely suggestions helping keep us on track. We realize that in this fast paced walkthrough, there's been little time to absorb the details. However, we hope you have, we have piqued your interest. What has caught your attention? Did you see ways to use the hard technologies of building and scripting realistic simulations and the soft technologies of online training and collaboration? Are there professional disciplines separate from your own that could benefit from the two working together? Please visit our booth at Expo 3, booth 21 for further information. And if you're there, you can click that blue valve on Andy's flare and make it zoom. That's my favorite thing. And this concludes when professional and virtual worlds collide. We thank you for your time and attention. Wow, thank you all so much. And uh, as an avatar that's been around since 2007, I have heard of your name. So it is such an honor to be moderating and uh, finally on stage with all of you. It's incredible. Um, thank you uh, also um, to the entire team of uh, Open Simulator Community Conference. And as a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, the next session will begin at 5 p.m. in this keynote session, which is entitled Developing and Evaluating Virtual Reality Simulations in Resource-Scarce Settings. Also, we encourage you to visit the Poster Expo at Expo 3 Region to find accompanying information and presentations and explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OCC Expo 2 Region, along with the sponsor and the crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and to the audience. Uh, looking forward to the next session. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.